Take a breath. All set, ready to go? Yes. Welcome to another session of virtualpitchpractice.com. We started this with the Rays Forum and some of the, uh, the events that are coming up, like Techstars. And virtual pitch practice is an opportunity, especially during the time of COVID, but for anybody, anywhere, to come to a session, learn a little bit about what they're doing, uh, in terms of their presentation, get some public speaking skills, get a little bit of advice um, on making a presentation to get capital. This is about the capital journey, getting sales and growing your business. So we're at the big convention. It's breakfast. We're all going down together and there's going to be a bunch of breakout sessions later in the day. And I look at your badge and I see we're at the same convention in the same hotel. You've got 19 floors before we hit the breakfast buffet. And I say to you, good morning. I see we're both going to the same place. What do you do? Well, hey, good morning, Steve. My name is Tamara. Well, I'll tell you, do you ever have a complete sense of overwhelm and never feel like you can get through everything in your to-do list? Yes, I do. <laughs> You're not alone. Me too. So that's what actually I've done is I've um, found a solution. Um, the name of my business is My Panda. And it's the personal assistant next door app. And what we do is we hire trusted people from right within your hyper local community that have extra time and want to help out their neighbors. And then they step in and with a few clicks on your phone, you can go into the app and put in a request for just a one off thing and have someone come and help you. Or if you need something more consistent help, we can assign you your own very personal assistant next door, your panda, to help you out on a more consistent level. And we make it really affordable too. So everyday families can get the extra help that they need. Great, that sounds so cool. Why don't we get a cup of coffee together and you can tell me more? I'd love to, it's super fun. All right, so the purpose of any elevator pitch is to get to that point where they say, your listener says, tell me more. Now I have a question for you though. From my point of view, it's a little bit long, mm -hmm. okay? Because just in case there's somebody else in the elevator with us or there's distractions or we're on the express and we get from top to bottom, it's a little bit long. Can you tell me that story again, but condense it a little bit? And can you give me a, what I like to call a, it's just like, and pick something else that we all know and tell me it's just like this. Think about that for a second. Okay. What is it just like? So it's kind of like a marriage of Uber and TaskRabbit, but much more personalized. Perfect. <laughs> That's the kind of thing that I want you to be able to say to somebody so that they will say, tell me more. Um, so it's just like TaskRabbit and Uber put together for what benefit? But to help you get all those little things in your to-do list done that there isn't really one service out there to help you with. Okay, see, that's another defining thing. There isn't really one service that helps you all this stuff. So what we're doing is we're taking maybe 50 or 75 words and we're gonna melt it down to three or four rock solid sentences. So you start with, did you ever? Great. Did you ever have this problem? Define the problem. And remember, this is part of something that every presentation has. You have to define the problem. So you're perfect about defining the problem. Did you ever have this problem? Now tell me the problem again succinctly. Completely overwhelmed by your to-do list. Perfect. Have you ever been completely overwhelmed by your to-do list? So we have a service that is like TaskRabbit and Uber, and then define the benefit again. But it's more personalized, so it can help you get 
through all those little things on your to-do list that there really isn't another service out there to help you with. There's really no one service mm -hmm. out there to help you with. Mm -hmm. So if you could smooth those, that's, that's three ideas right there. It's beginning, middle, and end. It defines the, the issue. It gives me a what if, or a, not a what if, but a, what it's like so that I can grasp it and visualize it immediately. And then it tells me the benefit. And, the, and for me, the overriding benefit is, and it's all on one platform. Right. Now, if the elevator doors still haven't opened, you have two more sentences, one feature and one super benefit. You already said them in my mind. The, the one feature is it's, it's all on one platform. So with a single application, you can do everything. And the benefit is, and help me define this a little bit more. To me, the benefit is that it's all on one platform. So it's coordinated, it's simple, and all the billing is taken care of automatically. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So if you could string that together in the three and then the, the one more sentence, which is the, the overriding feature and the benefit of the feature. Want to try it one more time? Yep. So, yeah. Hey, you ever felt what do you do? <laughs> hi. Um, yeah, hi, my name's Tamara. Uh, so let me ask you this. Have you ever felt completely overwhelmed by everything you have to do on your to-do list? Yes, for sure. <laughs> yeah, me too, along with everybody else. So what I have is I have my Panda, which is the personal assistant next door app. It's kind of like a marriage between Uber and TaskRabbit, but much more personalized. And what we do is on one platform, you can get taken care of every little thing you have on your to-do list with just a couple clicks on your phone. And all the billing is taken, oh, all the, yeah, all the right. details and all, all the, the billing are, are taken care, care of. Just in one simple platform, you don't have to worry about anything else and we just take care of it all. Okay. I don't know how you feel about it, but as a listener, I feel better about that. I think that encapsulates the whole thing and I got it. And so now I'm heading for coffee and I say, tell me more. And so we sit down at the table and you pull out your laptop or your whatever, and we've got 15, 10 minutes, whatever the time frame is. Show me your deck. Let me see what it looks like. Give me the pitch. Now, of course, there's a sales pitch and there's an investor pitch. Right. So now we're going to look at the investor pitch, I think, a little bit, right? Maybe you were lucky enough to get in the elevator with Mark Cuban. And even if Mark doesn't want your thing, he says, you know, I know somebody who's doing something like that. Talk to them. Yeah, it's as many people as you could possibly talk to, right? <laughs> yep, as many as possible. Okay, awesome. Well, so my name is Tamara Lucas, and I am the co-founder and CEO of My Panda, which, as I said, is the personal assistant next door app. So I want you to take a minute and just think about your to-do list and think about these images here and if any of them strike a chord with you. So I can tell you that I'm a single working mother of two. I have no family within 500 miles and my to-do list is constantly stressing me out and overwhelming in this. So I would love to have you be a part of our dream, being that support that's helping others in our community get their to-do list done. I appreciate your time. Nice job. I wanna do two things. I, I, to, to try to make it better if I can. Mm -hmm. And once again, these are my suggestions. They're subjective. Um, I've been wrong before. <laughs> there's but, no right or wrong. There's there's no, well, there's no right or wrong unless you're not getting the money or you're not getting the sales. Right. And then we have to do something differently. All right, meta question. What is the differentiator between my panda and everybody else yep what is the key differentiator the single uh what, what, what do we call it the uh, unique selling proposition the single-minded promise it is the all in one that we can take care of all of the little things there's so 
every other service out there is like siloed, right? So there's house cleaning services, there's dog walking services, there's, you know, you can have a handyman come. Those are all like individual things. Again, kind of like going back to our elevator pitch, right? Where with one platform, you can get your whole to-do list done, right? So I tried to capture that in that one slide when I was like giving the example of, you can do one request, have us do your meal planning, your shopping, your prep, to walk your dog and do your laundry with one request. So you've got one person that comes in that actually can take care of our actual to-do list because our to-do lists tend to be really varied. Yeah. Okay. That's one huge differentiator. I'm writing that down. Remember you said that to me. What else? Is there another huge differentiator why I don't call TaskRabbit or um, Angie's? You know, Angie's List has rebranded and pivoted themselves after five or six years in the market. Why don't I call Angie's or TaskRabbit? Tell me again. So it's the community. So what it's the community? We, yeah, we um, our service grows are how we define our service areas, and it is so we're, you know in our research that I referred to, the if you think about like the next door app right? Mm -hmm. People tend mm -hmm. to ask on that platform. They ask their neighbors for suggestions. They trust right. their neighbors. Right. So by having these small defined areas and we hire people from within your neighborhood or a few surrounding neighborhoods, really. So it's that level of trust. You might even semi know this person or at least, you know, a couple degrees of separation. Um, so that increases the trust. It increases efficiencies. You tend to know what roads to avoid if you're you know, going over to a job, you're not gonna get caught in traffic. You also can support local businesses. So you might know the best flower shop to go to or the small little market that you can go to that if you're in Midtown Atlanta and someone comes from Conyers into town, they're not gonna know that. Okay, so, stop right here. Okay. I get it. And full disclosure for anybody who does watch the entire video broadcast, We've had this conversation before, and I know this, <laughs> but I'm making you say it because, put the deck back up, let's go through the deck and let's see where you kill everybody with all in one and community and trust, which you mentioned first. Yeah. I'm gonna bet you a nickel that those things do not jump out as key differentiators. And we'll go through it slide by slide. I took a little bit of notes. Um, the work that I've done all my life is advertising and marketing. I was in a legacy ad agency business years ago, which I founded. We did catalogs, we did brochures, newspaper ads. It all translates the same way. The principles are the same. And for those of you who are familiar, you know, Guy Kawasaki has his 10 slide template, which, you know, it's a template. So you can adjust it and you can change. It doesn't have to be 10 slides, but the steps that he takes to get from, here's where we are, give us the money mm -hmm. are the same. And when I teach, I teach at Emory from time to time with Charlie Getz, the professor of entrepreneurship. I teach beginning, middle and end, which is also the problem the process or the, the protocol to get to the promise, which is the solution, which is the, what we just talked about. So here's your title. This is uh, on the screen as you walk to the podium, they've just introduced you as our next presenter and you walk up. Slide one, please. Okay. The Pictures are terrific. And you lay out the story here, the Monday to-do list, but I would prefer the problem to smack me in the face. And the problem is we're all out of time. These things that you have here as bullet points to, to open the show, you need to pound people with, with the premise, the three Ps, the, the, you know, the premise or the problem starts. And 
I would like to see what, what we call bottom line up front, bluff. You need to bluff everything. Take all these bullets out because I can't listen to you come to my heart or my fear that I can't get anything done mm -hmm. if I'm reading. I can't listen to you and, and read at the same time. Give, give me the takeaway, the bluff, the bottom line up front right here. So take all these bullets out of your first slide and okay. what would be the synthesis of the problem? We just, none of us have enough time. We're completely overwhelmed. None of us have enough time. It's yep. that simple. Yep. For me, none of us have enough time. That's your headline. Mm -hmm. Take everything that you have on that slide and now make that your script. Like actually just make that the title. Actually make that the title. Take the three bullets out. Don't make them smaller because maybe I can read them. Take the three bullets out and mm -hmm. slam me with none of us have enough time. You and have now I, a, sorry. And when I'm talking, should I bring up one or two of these points? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. And and scare me. Remember this too. Aristotle, I teach this. I won't be too pedantic. <laughs> Aristotle said there's three ways to, to persuade people. The head the heart and the guts, or head, heart, and survival, if you want. You cannot appeal immediately to the head because I don't care. You haven't made it about me. I'm not afraid of anything. I'm not afraid of missing out. So you can't start with the fact I, I'm not engaged yet. You need to either scare me I am not gonna get something done. I'm gonna miss something important. My survival, my family is at risk or make it personal. My mom is sitting there, she, she can't get it figured out. I can't get to mom, I can't do my work because I have the baby in my lap. We are just out of time. 80% of people feel time poor. This is your script, but the headline is, Nobody has enough time mm -hmm. or something to that effect. And now I can synthesize that in a second and know what the problem is. And I can listen to you start to appeal to other parts of, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And maybe here too, I could even do something about like the physical effect of stress on us too. Um, maybe you could. I mean, that's terrific but not in the headline. Right, right. Great, I think the physical is, is good for the script because that really, really scares the heck out of me. I could right. be making myself sick, worrying about this, that, and the other thing. Yeah. And you'll change your, depending on who you're talking to, you're gonna change that script a little bit. If, you, if this, remember we said at the beginning, there are going to be two presentations eventually. One is to buyers, you know, you know, or or pandas, you know, mm -hmm. join us because, or you know, engage us to use our service because. So all those things that appeal to one market, stress, your own health because you're doing this. And of course, the other thing is going to be, you know, to an investor pitch. But right. Now, let me ask no one no one has enough time yeah so as far as like my the pdf that i send out to investors should i have some of these some of the script on those or should i just use the same slides as i use with i will talk about that in a minute okay talk about it in a minute slide, slide. two yes okay. please okay same story here what's the takeaway for this slide that there's a lot of a lot of different options out there, but none of them do everything that we need. That's it. Nobody does everything that you need or that we need. The question mark, I want to know what the question mark means. Bottom line up front, nobody does everything we need.
or you need, depending on who you're talking to. Mm -hmm. For the investors, it's we need, because we're all going to be in this together. For the pitch, it's nobody does everything that you need, because mm -hmm. I need everything. And then your script is just fine. And by the way, you said a few things that were humorous. I love humor. Humor <laughs> lightens things up, and it, it means you're not pounding away at people, and they like you. They sympathize with you. The humor was great. Right. Your script here is really good. The headline is, nobody does everything you need. And then you can explain as much or as little as you want as you did. Very good. That was great. Okay. Next slide. Okay. Um, what's the bottom line here? <clears throat> and and so, and you just asked the question in slide two. So what's what's the headline here? We do everything you need. <laughs> My panda does it all. Uh huh. Yep. My panda does it all. Yep. And I'm trying to capture here too. Yeah, I mean, so it is sort of that does it all, right? Like the little thought bubble is like wide open, right? It can be anything that you want to put in there. Right. Um, the sense of community where the pandas are all sort of in that, like, you know, in the neighborhood with the road. Um, and then I want to have the pricing on there too, just to capture that it's affordable. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, I, I forgot about that. Um, I personally would take that out at this time. Okay. Because before I decide that it's worth my while or that it's affordable, I need to be fully convinced. And I'm, I, I don't know all the services that I'm getting and how it's all gonna fit together yet. So, so don't worry about that. Okay. I would take that out. And I love the to-do list. I love the, the, the screenshot. Um, what what would you put in that thought but would you change it each presentation um i suppose i could and right now it's a blank yeah if she's stressed i want to know that she's stressed if she's got 92 things to do um or You know, I was thinking about that. I, I almost was thinking if there was a way you could put the screenshot of the of the service into the bubble. Because mm -hmm. we want to know what she's looking at on her phone. There's two possibilities. She's looking to get a laundry folding service for all that crap that's on her couch. Yeah. Um, and she's stressed. Or... Maybe she's got a three o'clock. I'm late for my three o'clock appointment. Right. Um, and and this is the answer. Right. Yeah. But see, we need to, I'm reading tidy up. We need to tidy up this slide just a little bit <laughs> and make it more hard hitting. The pandas, the screenshot. Um, I, I, I would almost go OMG ex in the thought bubble. OMG exclamation point. How am I going to get this all done? Or I'm I'm late to pick up the kids. And then as you move to the right of the slide, there's the answer. There's the pandas who are going to do it. And my panda takes care of your to-do list. Yeah. Okay. See, all this stuff is floating. I have to tell you again, one of the things that happens in presentations is all this stuff is floating around in our heads and we know it and we see it and we make the associations, but strangers don't. So we have to really be specific and lead them through it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you do. You get lost in it. You've been in it so much. You know? <laughs> That's exactly what happens and it happens to everybody. That's why, frankly, you 
hopefully come to somebody like me whose job isn't about the business and it isn't about the technology. It's just about getting the message out. Yeah. I do this with CDC all the time. These guys are so deep into their research that they forgot to tell people why this is such a good therapy or why this is a good protocol. Okay, next. So service groves is not the takeaway. The takeaway is what? And this yeah. is... This, this is where we said before, and we both looked at it and we said, it's trust. Mm -hmm. It's service you can trust or people you can trust or something to that effect. And the subhead is to the effect of work with people in your community. Mm -hmm. When you explained it to me once, last time or last year, maybe even, you were, you were very um, uh, adamant is the wrong word, but you, you were very clear that this was a community, it was a community of trust and that it was a two-way street. Mm -hmm. You were giving uh, jobs to people and people were getting jobs in the community so that the whole thing was, was a trust factor. And now, in the elevator speech and in the, even maybe the previous slide, you'll make that reference to next door, how it's an informal uh, community of trust because Steve called Jan to get the rock guy who repaired you know, the, the patio and Joe called Bob to get the plumber who really did a great job. So in the previous one you can say how it's all haphazard and it's all over the place and it's not all in one but this is a community of trust and then you can go ahead and explain the linkage and why it's better than angie's or next door because it's formalized because you have vetted people because they know you you know them mm -hmm. and all that script works together here. Mm -hmm. So service groves gets replaced by something about a community of trust. Yeah. And then your script makes a lot more sense. Yeah, okay, that's good. Next. Um, First of all, my note here is that this, this is not clear and it's, it's kind of busy. Mm -hmm. um, there is sort of a template for how people present their uh, revenue models. The, the other question I have is, is this a little early for the revenue model slide or do you want it two or three slides later? Because, go to the next slide, that's it. Do you have any questions for me? Thoughts, pushback, feedback, additional questions? Yes. Well, All right. I hope this was helpful. It was wonderful. Thank you. And, and, uh...